Hi, I'm Ryan Summers, one of the creative directors here at School of Motion, and I've been using After Effects for almost 20 years on things like title sequences, VFX for feature films, and yes, even Voltron. In my time using After Effects, I've come across a lot of tools, but here are five of my favorite that you may not have heard of. When you start going into third-party plugins and scripts, it can be a really mind-bending experience. So I'm here to show you some of the plugins and scripts you may not have heard of. We're not talking about Element 3D or Particular or Stardust. Let's take a look at five tools that talk about keyframes, compositions, timelines, the project panel, and one tool that'll help you work a lot faster. We know in After Effects, the lifeblood of all animation is keyframes. And if we watch this, we can see that there are tons of keyframes in here. Let's just say if we wanted to, we could go in and we want to adjust the left foot. Being able to move back and forth between keyframes is pretty straightforward. If you hold on shift, you can snap to keyframes as you move the current time indicator back and forth. And if you hold down alt and you're working with a slower rig or a slow character to compute, that'll keep the interface from refreshing, which allows you to kind of scrub back and forth pretty easily. The nice thing is you can still see the controllers move back and forth. So if I go to another keyframe and I let go of the mouse, the character will update. So that's kind of a fast way to kind of move around with things. But what we really do as animators is we move back and forth. We flip, we try one keyframe, we go to another one, we see what the difference is. So in After Effects, the keyboard shortcut for doing that is J and K. And it's pretty straightforward. It's nice to be able to go back and forth between these. But one thing I've always wondered about was I really want to be able to just bounce back and forth between specific keyframes on a specific track of a specific object. So let's say the left foot and the position it's highlighting all of these keys, right? Now, wouldn't it be great for After Effects for it to know that, you know, what I really want to do is if I hit K, I shouldn't go to the next keyframe that's visible. I should be bouncing back and forth to the ones that are selected. So that's where the smart keyframe navigator comes in from AE Scripts. It's really simple. It's two scripts that you install and then you can apply keyboard shortcuts. I have Shift C and Shift V to go to previous keyframe or next keyframe. And you saw me going back and forth with J and K and I'll do it again really quickly. Like let's look at how many key presses it is to get to the next keyframe that I want. One, two, three, three keyframes, but even to get all the way to the end, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, you're spamming the K button or spamming the J button just to get back and forth from the set of keyframes that make up your cycle. Now let's roll back to the beginning. And this time I'm gonna use Shift V and look at that. You can notice if you just watch down here, if I hit Shift C, it just bounces back and forth between the keyframes that I have selected. So that makes it really easy to go and flip back and forth between my poses, which is what animating is all about, right? I don't need to see all the breakdowns, but if you think about it, when you're animating, how many times are you pressing K and J? You could reduce those a ton. Another little great thing about this is that it doesn't have to be just a specific track, but if you're looking at all of these different keyframes for all these different controllers, and you wanna just focus on the things for a layer, let's say, it'll do the same thing. If I hit Shift C, it'll ignore any of the keyframes that have happened right here. You'd think it would stop right here, but if I hit Shift C, it ignores those. So it's kind of intuitive. That's why the smart and smart keyframe navigator actually is true. It's smart enough to know what you're looking at and you reduce the amount of times you have to hit those shortcut keys. How often have you opened up one of your old files or inherited a file from someone else? And as you scroll through, you realize it's a complete mess. No folders, no naming conventions, no organization, no sense of the project or the flow of the project that's contained within it. But what if I told you that there was a script that with the press of one button could not only create folders, but also take your comps, pre-comps, and your assets and put them in the right place? Well, that's what declutter from AE Scripts does for you. So let's get into this master comp. I want to see what my flow actually looks like. So there's a really easy way to do that. You can use composition flowchart. And yes, After Effects does have a way to view your project nodally. It's great. It's not necessarily a nodal compositor, but you've got to think of it more like it's a nodal organizational tool. If you think of it that way and you change a couple of the presets, it's actually super powerful. Now, if you've done this before like me, you click plus and all of a sudden it feels like there's this rainbow colored spaghetti mess that you just have no idea what to do with it. But if you go to the filters and you actually turn off the footage, solids and layers, as well as the effects. And I like to switch flow direction from top to bottom to right to left. And all of a sudden I have something that mimics a lot of what I do when I work in my timelines. I have my main comp and then I have all my pre comps kind of cascading to the right. You can also change it from the kind of the spaghetti noodles to the straight arm connectors and all of a sudden you have this really clean workflow. There's a lot of great things in here. So if you click something, it automatically syncs to your project window. There's also a little tip. You know how After Effects works. 
every time you right click, it really depends on what you're right clicking over. There's all these extra tools here that give me a couple options that aren't even down in my menu. So I can justify left and it's even a little bit cleaner. If I have, you know, nodes all over the place, I can right click and say clean up and it automatically pops into place. But what's really great is I can start to see my project flow in a way that didn't make sense before that, right? And what's also great is you can see these rainbow colors. You notice over here, I actually have the label color column all the way to the left. And I use that as an organizational tool. Now you're probably used to sorting by name, but did you know you could actually sort by label color? Now, right now that doesn't make much sense because everything's randomly applied in terms of colors, but I can actually start applying my colors really easily here. And if you take a look at the left, all of a sudden it pops up to the top. If I take this next layer of comps deep, I can turn this red. All of a sudden they start cleaning up and you can go on and on. And this is why I like to have my own kind of set of colors in my labels. So I know I'm going to amber and then at the bottom, I'm going to yellow. And you can see here, wow, look at that. All of a sudden, this makes some sense. Just so you know, you can go to edit preferences and labels and you can change these colors and the names. So I like to use magenta as the kind of like call out. And I go from these warm colors all the way down to these cool colors. And again, that's what happens is when you right click here, it matches the order you have in your preferences. So I have something that's a little bit ordered and structured. Now, if I go to the declutter window, you can see there's just three or four buttons. These are custom folder organizations that I've made. And if I hit on spring cleaning, the edit window, you can actually start to see as I scroll through here, this is what I want my default folders to look like. So I've got render, I've got comps and pre-comps. I've got my assets with subfolders for all of my assets. And if you look over here in this kind of light gray, you can start to see that some of these actually have names. So something like images, if I click on it, declutter comes with this preset sorting option. So you can tell a folder to automatically fill it with compositions, pre-comps. You can use prefixes and suffixes or extensions, which are super powerful. And then audio, video, and image and solid. So we can look here. This is pretty straightforward for me, for my organization. If I hit cancel. Now, what I want you to do is just watch over here in the project window. If I hit spring cleaning, it'll save. And in a matter of seconds, all of that mess all of a sudden gets organized into a very understandable, repeatable project window organization. So if I look into my assets, I can see that in respect to the fact that I had a Photoshop folder with all of those layers, they're still there, maintain that. Um, but then I go into my images, all the images are there, my video, my red files there. And if I go to the pre-comp, what's really cool is that if I'm still sorting by color, you can see that the pre-comps are there and they're maintaining that order versus if we were sorting this way, and I went into my pre-comps. It's just kind of this mess of color and mess of names. I don't really know what that is, but if I go ahead and sort here, the great thing is not only does it sort by color, but it still respects the fact that they're inside a folder. It doesn't reorganize these folders. So very quickly, you can see how the power of something like declutter kind of almost feels like magic. True Comp Duplicator, it's an oldie, but a goodie, and it's perfect for things like lower thirds, sports graphics, broadcast packages. But the coolest thing I could think of to show off this script is to introduce you to my buddy, Axel Dangerson. He's a fully rigged do it character, but I want him to have a rival. And I think I'm gonna make his rival, his evil twin brother, Laser Raverton. So really what I need to do is make a duplicate of his composition and all the pre-comps. And it's not as easy as it sounds. I could go to Axel, duplicate him, call him Laser and just drag him over. But as you would guess, if I jump in there to that pre-comp, it's still the axle rig. So if I was to grab his center of gravity, move him down and go back to that main scene, you can see both rigs have moved, which makes a lot of sense. They're both sourcing the same rig. So if I undo that move and delete that laser comp, the next best thing I could do is go to the axle rig and duplicate that, right? So I can have the axle rig, I can rename him laser, and let's just change the color to something like blue. And if I add him into the scene, make him 3D and scale him down to 50%, we can have these two twin brothers face off. And you'd think if I double click in here, I have my own rig separate from Axel. I can grab his hips and get him into a fighting stance. If I jump back out to the scene, you can see two separate characters, two separate poses. But what happens if I want to change his face? Right now, Laser's smiling quite a bit, and I don't think that's his character. So if I go into the laser rig and I take a look at his face, if I grab that head controller and go to the effect controls, you can see we have a bunch of controls. I have ability to flip the head left and right. I can control his mullet. And then I also have this mouth slider that if I hit 50, I should have a wide open mouth, but I don't. If I went to Axel's rig and I picked his head and went to mouth select, he changes. And sadly, if I go to the laser rig, so does laser. So we have some controls that we can make individual, but things like the props or the mouth controls, 
they don't work. And to figure out why, we should really go back to our composition flowchart. I told you that thing was going to be handy. It's actually worth it if you have a second monitor, just leave the flowchart open just to see what happens to your scene as you start building it out. So let's hop on into the composition flowchart and let's control click and we can see what we've got. I have the laser rig, I have the axle rig, but you can see they're both pointing to the same precomps and then the nested precomps even further. And what those happen to be? The mouth comp, the prop comp. So what's the next best step? Well, that's where True Comp Duplicator comes in handy. I'm going to go ahead and delete my laser rig, which you can do from the comp flow chart. I'm going to select my axle rig. And then if we go to window, there's a little trick here that normally you can scroll down, you can click on the button, but it seems really jumpy. One thing you can do is if you know the script that you're getting ready to call up, just hit the first letter. And you can see as I hit T, I start scrolling through really quickly. And there's True Comp Duplicator. You can hit Enter. I'm going to make a new comp dupe and I'm going to search for anywhere it says axle. I'm going to replace it with layers. So my axle rig is going to be laser rig. I'm going to group all the items it makes. So all the pre comps, the comps, everything's going to go into this folder. So it's easy for me to find. And the biggest one here is to update the expression so that they're no longer linked to that same source from axle. It's pretty straightforward. I hit duplicate selected. It'll take a second for it to happen. But when it's done, you can see there are 17 items duplicated and all the expressions updated, which is amazing. I hit OK. There's my laser rig. I actually have the main comp for laser and I have all my pre comps, which is great. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing we did before. I'm going to make this purple and I'm going to pull him out and put him into my comp folder. And then I'm going to grab him and drop him into that scene. So the same thing we did before, we make him 3D, we scale him 50% and we set him ready to do battle. Now, here's the real test. Let's go back to our flow chart and you can see there's something different. So if I control click on the plus, you can also see that there's a lot more comps here. I'm going to pull these out and you can see we switched from axle to laser because of the renaming. I'm going to just go ahead and change my color and you can see here as well, those all important pre comps came along for the ride. Let's go to my laser rig. And if I grab the head and I go to my effects controls, let's try something like 40. So there's a small mouth that's changing. Now, if we hit axle rig, they're both different. They're individuals. So now, not only can we change our poses, we can change our face shapes, we can change our prop selection, and we have a completely new hierarchy. You can imagine where if you're doing sports graphics and you have a main comp and you need to swap out multiple things, team logos, a background plate, new type. But really, when you talk about characters and you talk about all these nested compositions where there are expressions going back and forth, True Comp Duplicator is one of the best tools you can have in your back pocket. So Smart Key from Navigator is amazing. It lets us be able to move back and forth quickly between the keys that we want to move between. But is there a tool that lets us work with layers in a quick and intuitive fashion just like Smart Key from Navigator? Well, the answer kind of is yes. So I have to confess, I love Axel Dangerson so much. So I had to bring him back to show off a script called Lazy 2. And in this sequence, it's essentially his title reveal. Let's take a look. Well, we've got Axel, but we don't have a title. So this is, again, a great place for us to show you how to use Lazy 2. And here, we actually have an example, but it's pretty flat and it's pretty boring. And what I'd really love to do is much in the same way that Flow allows us to play with ease-ins and ease-outs for keyframes, I want to use Lazy 2 to allow me to do the same thing, but for layers. It's essentially a staggering tool. It's a way to be able to take a collection of layers and offset them in time. So it's really straightforward, but it's super powerful. I can just basically go and grab the first letter and the last letter. And using this, this is my in point and my out point for the entire animation. I can actually select a preset and let's just use a maximum ease, but pull that back and maybe just have a little bit of ease at the beginning. I want these to come out fairly fast and I want them to cushion at the end. So it's really straightforward. Right now I have a bunch of layers selected and I can assign how many frames I want this actual stagger to happen. Let's say it's something like 15 and I just hit the plus sign and let it go to town. And you can see it took the order of the letters that I selected and it applied a nice kind of curve across the entire selection based on what my eases are. So let's go ahead and just ram preview that and see what it looks like. Like that's pretty nice just to start off with. But what if I want to have it come out from the center? That's just as easy. All I have to do is select them in the order that I want. And after that, let's try having a bigger slam out. And look at that. It's super easy to go and try different staggers. And if you ever run into a problem, it's pretty straightforward to just reset everything. You just have to hit the reset button. So the cool thing about this is it actually works on keyframes as well. So if I go to the project window and I hit U to expose all my keyframes, all I have to do is just go and drag all my keys in the order that I want. 
And then if I go back to lazy, let's go and select something a little bit different. Let's say I want to ease out from the beginning and slam at the end. But then I also have this extra row. This allows me to pinch the keyframe. So it's almost another dimension of staggers. And I'm going to go ahead and say I want to pinch out. And I get this controller that shows how the graph is going to change over time. And let's say let's make this over 15 frames and hit enter. It's going to take a few seconds to think about it. But then once it's all done, look at this has this incredible curve that I don't know how long it would take to actually make this by hand, but it would take a lot longer than what it just showed. Let's go ahead and let it play. And you can see, it's a really nice set of animation that, again, there can be some tweaks, but maybe you want to say, I can say, you know what, let's go ahead and select all those keyframes again and just reset it. And maybe I won't make it so extreme. You can see it snaps back into place really quickly, pull some of the ease out. And then as I select all my keyframes again, I get those pinch options. Maybe I'll pull back on the pinching a little bit and maybe I'll make it 22 frames just to have a little bit more time for the pinching to occur. And you can see what you've got now. It's a little bit easier, but look how fast it is to just go ahead and try different staggers. To be able to do that on your own when you're moving them would take so much time that you wouldn't even consider really doing it. So again, this is a case of one of those plugins that the name is kind of really actually the opposite of what it does. Lazy 2 doesn't really make you lazy. It actually makes you a little bit more adventurous in exploring different animation styles. For this last script, I wanted to share a productivity booster that's great when you have very heavy effect stacks or really anything that's slow to scrub through or preview in After Effects. And I wanted to show you it with this file from VFX Promotion, and it's a perfect candidate because it's got animated elements, stock explosions, high resolution red footage, still photography, and that plasma bolt from Trap Code Particular. It's deceptively simple, but when you see the effect stack, you'll understand why it's so slow to render. Now, what is this script that we're talking about? It's got a strange name, believe me. It's called Render Hogs, but just stay with me here for a second. Once you see what it can do with just a few button presses, you can see how you can have a boost to your workflow and you'll be wanting to reach for it a lot more often. So I have this crazy particle effect. I don't need to figure out what this design looks like at the first stage of approvals. I really just need to know where is it aimed? How long is it going to be on screen? And where does it end? And I don't need to do that with something in particular. I can do that with something like Beam. And Beam is so light and so fast to work with. It's basically just a starting point and ending point, and then you animate the length and time to create what ends up being a really silly and straightforward looking laser blast, but it answers those questions. And I'm still not worried about the final look, but I can say, I think this is how fast they're going to move. This is what the follow through will be. This is how gravity works or turbulence. And again, when I get that approved, then I can start working on the designs. And there, I really just start working on a single still frame. And that's where we start adding each of these elements, a fast box blur, a levels to tighten it up, the magic touch of CC vector blur to kind of create this electrical kind of pulse, real smart motion blur to kind of just smooth everything out, and then colorama over the top of it to give it that kind of plasma feel. And then all of those things together working in stages gives you this. But I will warn you, this takes a long time to preview. So if I've designed one of these, I don't really want to have to see it preview over and over and over all the time. Every time I scrub through, if there's a change anywhere in frame, it's going to have to be refreshed. But I really do want to know what the timing is like in context. Let's say I have another plasma bolt or I have to do that energy shield. I want to know where this is going to be. And I can really rely on that beam effect that I had at the beginning. The only problem is every time I need to go back and forth, do I really want to have to press turning on the beam, turning off all the other effects, and then remember where all of my other effects are at on my other layers? No, that's where render hogs comes in. And I'll tell you right off the bat that the interface is not that spectacular, but it's got it where it counts. So what if I told you I could turn on all these effects again, turn off beam, I can essentially tag these and call them render hogs. And you can see all it's really done so far is just add this little prefix in front. But then what if I grab the beam and I called it a substitute? It adds another little prefix. And if all of a sudden I say disable hogs, my beam's back. And that might not seem like a big deal, but think how many times you'd be pressing on and off of these effects. And then let's say we have eight different effects across one shot, but then imagine we have six shots and each one of those has eight effects in one button press. Once it's set up, you essentially can create groups and toggle these groups on and off. Super easy. The great thing about this is that at render time, if you've been working with the hogs off, all you have to do is toggle and render. It'll switch everything back to the hogs, the beautiful slow to render effects all turn on at once and it'll set up a render queue. So in that way, you can see how much of a boost this could be to your workflow. Smart Key Navigator, Declutter, TrueComp Duplicator, Lazy2, and Render Hogs. Five tools for After Effects that make your life easier and I bet they'll start you off in exploring for more tools like these. Make sure to check out School of Motion for more tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, 
and I'll be seeing you soon.